Welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. Well, I've reviewed science fiction novels. I've reviewed fancy novels. I've reviewed mysteries, albeit in film form. Now it is time for me to review a book that combines a couple of those, fantasy and mystery, in the form of an urban fantasy novel, Midnight Riot by Ben Aronovich, originally published in England as Rivers of London. Doctor Who fans in the audience might remember Aronovich's name. He wrote the episodes Remembrance of the Daleks and Battlefield during Sylvester McCoy's run as the Doctor, and he was one of three writers instrumental in creating the Cartmel Master Plan, which was also involved in Sylvester McCoy's run and involved in an attempt to return the mystery to the Doctor and his identity, something that fans of the current series might be familiar with um, in terms of the recent things going on with Matt Smith. Nash of Radio Dead Air did a really, really good episode of his Doctor Who reviews about the Cartmel Master Plan, and I will have a link down here to where you can watch it. I strongly recommend you check this out, especially if you're a Doctor Who fan. The book follows Peter Grant, a black police officer in the London Metropolitan Police Department who is finishing up his mandatory probationary period and is facing the grim reality of getting shoved behind a desk instead of getting to be a detective like what he signed up to be. However, before his probationary period is up, he and his friend Leslie May, another constable who, unlike her friend, is actually going to get to do some investigative work, are assigned to secure a crime scene overnight. The crime scene is Covent Garden, near the Actors' Church, where a man had been brutally murdered earlier by being decapitated with a large, blunt object, less like a cricket bat, more like a 2 by 4 While there... Grant is approached by a witness who saw the murder take place and can provide some information to help them track the killer down. The problem is that the witness is a ghost. This starts a chain of events that leads to Grant becoming a detective and also getting apprenticed to T Detective Chief Inspector Thomas Nightingale, the last sanctioned British wizard. While Peter investigates this first murder and a bunch of similar murders that follow, he also gets introduced to the magical side of life in London by having to negotiate a peace agreement between Father Thames, the mother of the Thames River, or at least its freshwater portions, and Mother Thames, the goddess of the Thames River, or its saltwater portions. Still, this book is pretty busy. Both the murder investigation in the A plot and the peace negotiation in the B plot are honestly enough to stand alone. They can. They both have the material, they have enough plot and meat and breadth and depth to them to make their own story in and of themselves. I mean, there are even points where the B-plot ends up stepping on the toes of the A-plot, not because the elements of the B-plot are relevant to the to, to A. The peace negotiation and the murder negotiation don't tie together. Um... Um, you might even call the B-plot a bit of a red herring, except it's not. They're just two separate plot threads, and only really in connect to each other in terms of interference from one and the other. Honestly, I kind of feel like the two stories would work better as novellas, as if the book, instead of having... Like just being one massive novel, it's two novellas collected together as sort of an omnibus kind of thing. Um, like Midnight Riot and the Rivers of London, um, or something like that. That said, this is an excellent book. As a fan of mysteries, I really liked the investigation here and did not feel cheated by the resolution. The characters are excellent, and the prose has a real sense of snap and wit to it. That's what I like in detective novels. It reminds me of the things I like about the Nero Wolf series, particularly with the character of Archie Goodwin and his interplay and banter, both with suspects and witnesses and that sort of thing, as well as with the character of Wolf himself. Um, it, it's something where definitely if you're a fan of that sort of semi-hard-boiled, 
but the, the, the witty, hard-boiled detective fiction, you really like this. I do need to kind of discuss the elephant in the room, though, briefly. The main character of this book is a black man, as was mentioned earlier. For the U.S. cover of the book, in addition to changing the title from Rivers of London to Midnight Riot to reflect the book's A plot instead of the B plot, they also changed the cover from a picture of London to a man in silhouette. This doesn't whitewash the protagonist, but it still feels like they're afraid that people won't buy a book that has a black guy in the front. In, in response to the controversy over this, they have said that reprints of the books will be done with the British cover art. I'm slightly disappointed by this, not because I think they shouldn't have changed the cover, but because I think they missed an opportunity here. I mean, to a certain degree, part of the reason why they changed the cover of the book for the English release and made the protagonist in silhouette is because there's this unfortunate... I don't want to say myth, but yeah, it's kind of myth, this idea in publishing that black protagonists on covers don't sell books. In fact, quite the opposite. Um, and I'd like to see somebody challenge that and try to prove it wrong. And this has been a good place to do that, to take the third book in the series, to put... The, do them in the style of the other ones, but instead of putting the protagonist in silhouette, show him. Have an artist draw the character, maybe kind of do him like what I did earlier in the story with, uh, earlier in the video with using Idris Elba from Luther as an idea of what the character looks like, looks like, or something like that. Um, draw an African American protagonist as the main character, uh, draw an African American protagonist for your main character, use that on the cover, and then look at the sales data. I mean, yes, this is the third book in the series, and, and notoriously for book series, they drop off over time. But still, there is usually a general idea of, okay, we can anticipate the book sales will drop up this much by book three compared to book two. Do the book sales increase? Do they level off? Do they, or do they drop off more? This would be a chance to, to test that. And then, depending on how it turns out, reprint the book with the British cover and, I don't know, just, just and try it that way. Or for the ebook version, I mean, admittedly, book covers don't do much for e for ebooks, but they have cover art. They they do do cover art for some of the ebook publications. And I like to see trying, like, a special ebook edition or something like that, which has the African-American cover art or something, just... Take a chance. In fact, this is kind of a general challenge to publishers. Next book you get with an African-American protagonist. Take a chance. Show him. Or for that matter, if it's a book in a series, take a chance and show your African-American protagonist and challenge the notion that African-American protagonists on the cover don't sell. I say this as a fan of Japanese anime, uh, of manga, where it used to be the conventional wisdom was that unflipped manga didn't sell, and that got proven wrong. And it was proven wrong by somebody taking a chance, in that case, at, the, at that time it was Borders, and take, and publishing unflipped, or selling unflipped manga, and seeing that, in fact, it did sell. Yes, Borders went out of business, but not because of manga. Anyway, enough of that rant and that tangent there. Right? And there's still book four, they can still do it then as well. Yes, book four hasn't actually been written yet, but this is a series that's probably going to get a book four. But anyway, I strongly recommend you check out Midnight Riot. If you have a friend who is a fan of urban fantasy, mysteries, or both, it is definitely a uh, good book to put on under their um, under the Christmas tree for them or in their stocking or whatever. It's, it's a paperback. It'll fit in the stocking. It should fit in the stocking, most stockings. Anyway... Enough with giving that book a recommendation, which I do recommend. Next week, we continue with Nintendo Power Retrospectives with Fun Club News number six. We're getting close to the end of Fun Club News and the beginning of Nintendo Power. There, but still, we've got a couple issues of Fun Club News left to go, and that's what we I will be talking about next time. So until then, thank you for watching.